Good evening, everyone. You're watching Social Chatter, your weekly social media marketing talk show. My name is Christian Karasevich, CEO and founder of SocialChefs.com, and we've got a great show for you this week. Uh, this is episode 163. Um, we are going to be talking about some Snapchat this week, a little Twitter. Uh, we've also got, I believe, some Facebook updates. But I'm going to go ahead and bring on Phil. Uh, we'll just do a quick hello, and then we're going to bring on our guest this week. So, Phil, how are you doing? Hey, Christian, I'm fantastic, buddy. It's great to see you again. How are you doing? You too. Doing fantastic as well. You know, I try to get used to the, the daylight savings time where I'm currently at. You know, we've got some daylight savings time happening here for about a week. And yeah. then I think we switch again, what, on Sunday? Yeah, we switch again on Sunday, man. <laughs> Sorry, so, bro. All good. So, um, who do we have this week on the show, by the way? Oh my gosh, I am so excited to bring my pal and super smart digital marketing genius, Corey Perlman to the show. So Corey and I are both in the National Speaker Association. Corey's a, another keynote on the digital marketing uh, side. And he wrote the book, Social Media Overload. I have mucho respect for Corey. Super smart, like I said, high energy and gonna bring us some great insight, Christian. So let's bring Corey on. I'm jacked that he's here. Definitely. Let me get Corey up here. Wait for it. Hey. That's very cool. There nice. he is. The man, the myth, the legend, Corey Perlman. What's up, What's brother? Up? Hey, Phil. Thanks for having me. And nice to meet you, Christian. Nice to meet you as well. So, so um, we got lots of cool stuff got? tonight, Corey. Are you ready for some fast and furious social chatter tonight? I'm ready, man. I've got my uh, I've got my coffee for the her first half, and then probably bourbon for the second half. I hope that's okay. It's, it's that kind of show, right? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Drinking with friends, there's nothing better. That's what I that's what I figured. Cool, man. So, Phil, where do you want to start this week? By the way, like, I mean, or by the way, Corey, what's the best way for people to, um, you know, if they want to like say tweet you during the show and whatnot? What's the best way for them to do that? So I'm I'm at Corey Perlman on most uh, social networks. It's with an E C O R E Y and without an A in Perlman. Um, but you know, uh, Facebook uh, they can see us at uh, Impact Social Media, which is the name of uh, our agency, and okay. uh, connect with me there. So very cool. 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 So the first question, hold on, well, hold on. I got a question for Corey. I got to know, is Rhea Perlman your mom or is it Danny DeVito your dad? <laughs> they are uh, long lost cousins. So luckily um, I got all their personality and none of their looks. So that's, that's good. I'm excited about that's that. That's yeah. good. I'm glad to hear that. So yes. cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And for all of you listening, I am as usual full of crap. So Melissa Jambastani, we're glad you're here. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for joining us today. So Christian, let's start with the most favorite platform that I don't have, and that would be Snapchat. What's up, Katie Miller? So yeah, so let's talk about Snapchat and the stuff that they change. I know Corey's just as much of a Snapchat fan as I am. Oh, I love it. I mean, I'm on there like 24 hours a day, Phil. I just can't, I mean, hold on one second, let me snap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold, hold on, what's that? Yeah, anyway, but we think it's important, right? Because we wanna bring a broad spectrum of stuff. And this is the new Snap Camera, an application. Get this on your desktop. That means, and I quote from them, you get to experience the fun of lenses on your desktop so now i can be a doggy on my desktop because <laughs> that's the best filter they have so i don't know corey are, are, are you going to be doing it doggy style for your clients this year wow, wow. wow. we're going there already huh phil Jeez. we gotta start early man what's this, up this, with that we went from pg to r just like that huh that's okay it. all right um you know phil uh no i'm not i'm not at all in fact i uh I see absolutely no application to uh, the business world with Snapchat. The first things I say on stage when I get on there is say no to Snapchat. Um, but listen, if your audience is age 13 to 26, by all means, rock out Snapchat. And some people are, and you need to plant your flag and be there. So, you know, it's really important to know where your audience is, Phil, and meet them there. My audience, not on Snapchat. So God bless them. But I'm out. So Corey's saying no to Snap. Christian, are you are you going to give him some love? You're going to give him some love? Because I know, right, Katie Miller has been on before. Katie loves Snapchat, right? She says it's a quick way for friends who live far away to chat and send photos. And Corey, I, I know you like at least three or four of your clients. And what about you, Christian? What are you thinking about this, man? Oh, I he's putting them out now. 
we're in trouble. So I did. I do have to test this out. You know, by the way, we we're the great thing I love about this is we can run a live video and we can apply these during the live video. You know, that's like it works pretty seamlessly. You can, you know, if you had a green screen for instance behind you, you can do that along with your snap filters. So I love that whole idea. You know, is this something I'm going to use? Uh, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I mean, like, come on, like, who's going to use this? <laughs> eh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, some of these, you know, I like the idea that you could do these, uh, but I don't think I'm going to be doing this during live video. Um, no, come you know, on. No, I mean, I, I, I have to say, I like the fact that they're getting creative with this, but like filters, seriously, kind of as Corey mentioned, you know, you kind of have to meet your customers where they're at. I mean, the only time this could be applicable if it's like Halloween, Christmas, you know, holidays, it can give you the ability to be a little more interactive with your audience, um, you know, and to kind of show your personal side uh, just a little bit. But, you know, aside from that, I mean, I'm not going to be doing the the Frankenstein. You know, I'm just looking at what all we have here. You know, we've got the Frankenstein. Wow. We've got pumpkin head. Yeah. So it I don't know. I kind cool. of. Where's Looks the cool, dog? yes. Where's the dog, Let's Christian? find the dog. Let's Come on, see. man. Find the dog. Melissa says, I hate Snapchat. I'm old. Melissa, you're probably younger than me. I hate Snapchat, too. So there we go. Christian's got the dog up. He's doing a doggy style here on Social Chatter tonight. Ba wow wow yippee oh yippee Go so. ahead and put hashtag doggy style in for our, our little session here. We'll get lots of viewers there, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> lots there of the right go. ones, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, super, super targeted. Uh, yes, yeah, it's yeah. very targeted. Yeah. Yeah. That's, right. <laughs> That's so, cool. I mean, there you go. By That's... the way, I, I do like the fact that, like, just look at how easy this, like, is. I mean, how great it works. You know, Based love that whole. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's fantastic. You know, and you can create custom ones. I don't know who else is going to be creating. You know, I don't know. Do I see? I mean, maybe if I'm, like, say, like, uh, like Reese's, for instance, who just had a fantastic uh, candy converter machine for, like, Halloween. You know, maybe I could create like, you know, a big Reese's like head or something like that and do some marketing. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think a lot of other businesses are going to tap into this. Yeah, probably so. not. Yeah. Katie says they're fun when they're goofing around and some of those geo filters for location. Now, here's the thing. Again, on the desktop, I would imagine right. that they'll probably not be so much location aware yet. But no. what I look forward to is Facebook Messenger ripping this off completely and making it even better. Because that's there what Facebook go. does, right? There Let's just be honest. So there Max Hedrum here. I mean, Christian Kirasevich, you got the last word, buddy. Snapchat, yay or nay? I'm saying, you know, like the idea. I'm, I'm lukewarm. One. Lukewarm. Totally lukewarm. Cool. Cool. Well, Amanda Ray says she likes Snapchat for the community, and it can be a great creative outlet. So Amanda will send all of our consulting clients that want Snapchat <laughs> over to you. Uh, you can just let us know what your contact info is down below or send one of us a private message. So we appreciate that feedback uh, for sure. Because if your audience is there, you definitely should not miss out. So, um, and you too can be a brown egg. So congratulations, Christian. So <laughs> that's terrible. Okay. Well, talking about Halloween, man, I think that's where we should go next is we know it's after Halloween, but still Facebook is testing out a special Halloween stories feature in the US. And while we're talking about Halloween, really think about this and think about how this is likely gonna roll out now for Christmas and for New Year's. So Corey, mm -hmm. what do you think, man? Yeah, I checked that out. Um, I thought it was pretty neat. It was a it was an, a, a different piece of real estate on the stories feature. So the opportunity to be able to, you know, I mean, what I tend to think about with our clients is getting above the noise and trying to find ways to find pieces of real estate within Facebook that not a lot of people are using. And mm -hmm. I think that um, if you can do that, and I was thinking about this with the Snapchat thing too, um, and you talked about this today, Phil, on your Facebook, is kind of being your authentic self and finding ways to do this, whether it be through your brand or even your personality or whatever the case may be, and still be you. Right. If you're forcing yourself into something that's just not you, it's just awkward and doesn't work. But Phil, you're a pretty silly guy. Some of this stuff works for you. Um, you like to have fun. It's part of your image and, and it just works. Whereas some other people, it doesn't, you know, so um, just in general, when you're playing with some of these different features and such, just make sure it's you. And I think that that's really helpful. But yeah, I thought it was pretty neat. Um, I think they're going to play with it in, in, in many different ways, obviously, as we come through the different seasons and things of that nature. But from a business standpoint, what I would say to your listeners is 
any opportunity to find some uh, not so common real estate that you can plant your flag on in the most popular social site in the world is not a bad idea. Yeah. Awesome, awesome suggestion there. We're getting some love from Megan Madonna Lawrence. Thank you, Megan. We're glad you're here. Katie talks about great people on Snap, but we're meeting great people now on Facebook and on social chatter tonight. So, Christian, what do you think about what Corey said, man? Is this is this an opportunity to go deep after something that isn't quite as populated as some of the other platforms? I think some, you know, again, some of this, like you're not gonna use this if you're a like, you know, if you're like a personal business. You know, you're not necessarily a little small business. You're not necessarily going to be, you know, um, like, or let me see if I can put this, elaborate on this, I guess. So if I'm a business, you know, I think these have a little bit of usefulness. Um, a lot of people have not tapped into Facebook, Facebook stories. I, I definitely think that's the case. Um, I like the fact that, you know, like you got Thanksgiving coming up, you got Christmas, you got New Year's. This is going to be a way for you as a business. Like, for example, you know, it's not about hiding behind your screen. You can humanize your brand. So for example, you know, if I'm the social media manager for a company, this is a great way for us to say like, hey, you know, happy Thanksgiving, you know, from the social media team at, you know, whatever business this is. So I think it's a good way for you to step uh, step out behind the, you know, camera or sorry, behind the screen and show people who you are. Um, I think businesses need to start doing that more versus like saying, hey, I'm a brand. Like I dealt with, you know, recently a, um, I dealt with a, a tennis company, I'm not gonna name them, but you know their social media manager would not give me their name. They're like, for protection of my identity, I can't tell you who I am. And I was like, but that doesn't make sense. Like you're not being transparent at all, you know. And um, I was I was dealing with a warranty issue with them. And you know, and I don't. I was like, what the heck? Like you know, I understand maybe years ago you might do that, but nowadays everybody's like, hey, you know, I'm the social media manager for this brand. So um, I I think it's going to be very useful. Uh, I think if they you know start to like. Uh, apply this more to what you know uh more true stories and kind of get people into stories so. yeah definitely I, I Corey, i love your points too and christian you echoed those on first authenticity right if that's who you are be there second not as populated yet not as crowded but big potential always an opportunity mm -hmm. there to get smart and then third it is the ability to humanize your brand any opportunity you can take that makes you more human, I think your brand needs to take it because people don't care about your brick and mortar business. They don't care about your website. They your care logo. about yeah. right, your logo, any of that stuff, right? They care about themselves. And then secondly, they might care about your people. Oh, I love that Katie is the person behind the brand that makes these gorgeous Christmas cookies. Yay. And I can't wait to see what Katie's cooking up in her kitchen today. So, and you know, if you don't know Katie Miller, she's an amazing cook and that's what she does. And I love the fact that she shares that with us on Instagram and doing some other things. So I really encourage if you're listening, you're in the business, you're thinking, man, uh, this might be a little bit hard. Well, just play around, you know, just be human. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't this way, you don't even have to wear a costume to create a Halloween filter. You don't have to dress up like a pilgrim uh, in order to be participate in Thanksgiving. And thankfully, I don't have to dress up like Santa Claus for New Year's because that just scares <laughs> people. I'm just saying it's half diaper so and half red suit. Let's not go there. So all this, like, you know, this AI and whatnot, or sorry, yeah, this, or this is augmented reality, but with all this augmented reality that we're adding to, like, you know, um, like, just making it easy for the customer to, like, use this feature, do you think that, like, this is going to, like, totally get rid of, like, the, the costume, you know, business model? <laughs> all the people selling costumes because, hey, I don't have to, you know, get that Santa hat that I've had, for, you know, for, like, you know, 30 years basically that's sitting in a closet somewhere. Just wear it on and Facebook. I can just right. <laughs> apply my filter. Like, hey guys, look at me. I don't know. What do you think, Corey? Are you gonna let your you gonna tell your customers to stop wearing costumes and start jumping out of the Facebook with their with their stuff on? Or do you think uh, there's still uh, an opportunity there to be personal? I, I think the uh the, the retail stores and the physical costumes are safe um for now. Uh, I think you're okay there. I, I do want to add one other thing to, to the stories thing that you mentioned, Phil, because I think it, you, you, you know, the important parts of business, two things. One is when Facebook double downs on a new feature, um, as marketers, as business people, it's important that we do the same. You know, when Facebook Live came out, you know, everybody was like, you know, part of the reason to do it, even if the feature at the time seems a bit silly, is that Facebook is concentrating on it. So if they are doing that, then it's an opportunity for us to get more 
uh, eyeballs. Remember when live came out, the little icon would come up on your phone. And you're like, mm -hmm. why is Stephanie Smith showing up on my phone? Right. It's because she went live before everybody else did. And she's getting that real estate. And the same thing with stories. And if you did the Halloween story, you would have jumped up above the people who were doing regular stories. So to kind of be where Facebook is going, I think is a smart thing for businesses to do. And the other thing um, when it comes to doing stories in general, if you can mm -hmm. find a way to add value, we talked about authenticity and I would always say add value. I have a lot of travel agent clients and yeah. we talk about doing Instagram stories all the time. Don't just show a margarita in your hand in front of a sunset, but talk about the excursion that you just went on and the certain things that you did on there or, or things that people need to do when they take their Alaskan cruise. Or you mentioned a, a, a chef or you know a personal chef, certain ways to be able to present a meal through your story, but add value to your tribe as you're doing your story and you'll get that much more engagement. Awesome. And I, I like the point, by the way, that you mentioned about, you know, tapping into a feature when Facebook really doubles down on it. You know, that makes a lot of sense. You know, and even if it is for a bit of a fleeting moment, you know, everything is moving so quickly these days. It still says, hey, you know, I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to test it out. It's going to, you know, it's an experimentation. You know, you're going to experiment. You're going to try it out, see how it works. And hey, if, if it sticks, keep with it, you know. Um, but as you mentioned, you, you have to get out in front of things sometimes too. You can't just like sit and be passive because if you're passive, you're, you know, you're not going to go anywhere. That's so, right. Yeah, so great, great points. Great, yeah, great stuff, guys. That's all really important stuff. And you know, one of the things that really helps humanize is when you have more one-to-one -one conversations. So this gives us an opportunity to be more one-to-one. -one. We don't have to take a picture of the whole staff. You can pick one person out to be your spokesperson for your Halloween or your Christmas party or whatever mm -hmm. that is, and make that one person the voice, at least for a while, at least for this one, and then you can mix it up. Right. And if you're going to do, you know, the 12 days of Christmas, for instance, coming up fairly soon or, you know, the eight days of Hanukkah, whatever that is, you can do that and then mix up your staff. So you humanize more and more of the staff. And because they don't have to dress up, because they can just use a filter, they can use their creativity. And it's going to be unexpected as a win for your customers, for some of them that have never seen any of these people before, even before they come in. So now they're going to ask for them. Oh, my gosh, I can't wait to see Corey because he looks like he was having so much fun mm -hmm. in that Facebook Live that I saw or that messenger that I saw. So that's pretty cool. And the you have to thing, think about it. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I'll just say the best thing about Facebook and the worst thing about Facebook is that it's so crowded. And so mm -hmm. we have to figure out ways to get above the noise. And going right. to what you just said, Phil, you know, it, you know, businesses, I'm sure you guys hear this all the time. You know, we're a real estate company, man. We're a mortgage broker, we're a roofer. Like, what, what mm -hmm. are we, you know, we're not gonna put on, yeah, and we understand that. Don't go so against your brand that you feel silly or embarrassed or whatever, right. but mm -hmm. be creative. You know, find ways to energize, to entertain. This is a social platform. You know, be creative, get above the noise, and some of these filters will help you do that. Go ahead, Christian. I was going to say, you know, you know how like everybody, you know, that starts a business, they like, um, shoot, I lost my train of thought here. But basically, you know, if you're a business, you have to like, you have to test things. You have to see what's going to work. You know, people don't just like tune in, for instance, to a show because, you know, like, hey, so and so is on there. They tune in there because they want to see that person. They like certain aspects of that. So, you know, like people have brand affinity, they connect with a brand because they love what the brand does, what the brand stands for, for example, how the brand energizes them sometimes, you know, their products. So, you know, in your business, like you said, you can't, you know, don't try to force it, but test it out. You know, ask your audience, ask for, you should constantly be asking your audience for feedback on these things. Test it out and ask your customers, hey guys, you know, did you check out our Facebook Live? You know, if they say, hey, I never saw your Facebook Live, you know, hey, maybe you need to change the time you're doing it, for example. Or, you know, just ask them for additional feedback so you can like learn more about, you know, what your customers want, you know, and where you can meet them at, as you mentioned. Yeah. And it, well, and it's an opportunity to repurpose as well, because if they didn't see it, now we can say, hey, by the way, can I get your email address? I'll be happy to send that to you because it could mm -hmm. be really valuable. You said that you like recipes with cranberries and nuts. And we did that last week with Katie Miller and she was awesome, made this great 
cranberry nut bread and you watch the live for 12 minutes, you get a little bit of Katie and maybe a little bit of product placement from us. And now mm -hmm. look at what we did here. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. So Any last yeah. I was I was just gonna say, yeah. So so my 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 last point about that is folks, we're sharing a ton of stuff tonight. We're going fast and furious. If you want to make sure you don't miss it, go to socialchefs.com slash daily. You get the email. Christian does a great job of writing this stuff up so that you have the best recap because these things fly by and we're doing our best to give you the insight on that. But then you can go check them out for yourself and see what happens because these are brand new breaking news stories. We bring on experts like Corey Perlman and we're excited that we can share all this. Can, with I, you. can I give you guys a plug real quick? I, I was researching a little bit earlier today about your show and I got so engaged with the content that I signed up and I'm not, you know, I would mess with you. Like I don't sign up for much of that stuff anymore, oh. but I was like, damn, <laughs> you'll see me. I was probably your latest subscriber there, Christian. So. Yes, definitely. Actually. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. So that's great. So let's stay on Facebook guys. Let's talk about now you can add songs to your profile. You can add music on stories and ready for this. Hey, Corey, I know we're going to be doing this soon, right? Maybe a little lip sync live. What do you think, <laughs> buddy? We can do this. We can bring Newman on, drink some bourbon, and we can we can do some lip sync live. What do you think? I mean, our best chance of ever going viral will probably be that, but not for the reasons we want to, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? Is there any any business opportunity here to, to use this other than the stuff that we, we just talked about? Yeah, I mean, I, I of all the things that I look through with these different articles, this one intrigued me the most. I've always, um, you know, for those of you listening, I, I'd be curious if, if you've ever wanted this, but I feel like music hasn't done a really, I say Facebook hasn't done a really good job integrating music into the platform. And I've always wondered about that. Like there's been times where I've wanted to like put a piece of a song or something like that. And I've, you know, thought of my, you know, the grandiose ideas of being that guy who developed that that uh, API or whatever to be able to put little bits of music. But this is something that is at least somewhere in that where they're starting to bring in music to, you know, some of the stuff that we're doing on stories and such. And the one you're showing right here, I don't know if you're able to play it, Phil, but you know, it's, I can't remember what it is, a famous song that she was dancing to, um, which James is totally Brown, like, baby. yeah, James I Brown. Good. I feel good. I mean, that really enhances the story. I'm pretty excited about this, to be honest with you. I think it's really neat. Yeah, See, I think now, so too. the part that I think is very useful for this is I'm looking at it from a licensing perspective. Oh. So chances are the reason Facebook probably did not allow this uh, or didn't have this feature is because they probably didn't have a license to be able to let you play the music. And that's where I think there's going to be some value in this because it's not just going to be for stories. You know, at some point they're going to let you do this for other things that you're going to do on Facebook, whether it's a live video. For example, I think they just bought another company for live. So this will be additional features that could be you know tied into live to keep you on the platform. You know, yes, it looks very Instagram esque, you know, with the, like the menus and the icons and being able to add on a sticker. But hey, you know what? There also has to be some you know similarities because they need to get the Facebook and the Instagram audience you know merged a little bit. Um, you know, so it's not so hard for you know Facebook users to have one way to do things and Instagram users to do another. But my key thing here, licensing. Definitely music license. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, so, you know, Apple bought Spotify recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perhaps the next move for Facebook is to buy BMI or ASCAP so they mm -hmm. can get better licensing and then lock you into that platform mm -hmm. so that if you want to license music, right, if they want to host a podcast, if you mm -hmm. want to host a show like ours and we want to have some theme music, maybe Sanford and Son. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, right? So we got it. Christian's like, who the hell are these old guys? No, no, no. I got, no, I got you. I got you guys. He's I mean, seen I'm the reruns. Crazy. He's seen the that's, reruns. That's, that's <laughs> yep. He knows who rerun is. That's mm -hmm, the better mm -hmm, thing, right? Mm. So, right? Nice, so, nice. Yeah. But definitely, I, I like your idea, but like, definitely like your idea also of being able to, like, you know, because everything is moving. Like when people are, you know, listening to streaming music, artists are still making money, for instance, off of that. The record company is still making money. Same concept. They start licensing it through Facebook, for example. The artist is still making their money. And at the same time, you know, it's providing the user with a much easier and a much better experience. So, yep. Well, just I, like buying ringtones, right? So now this would mm -hmm. be an opportunity and some exclusivity because I can totally see that there are some small businesses out there that are thinking, you know, there's one song that I really like that I think would be really good. It isn't well known, but I want to make sure that all the people like me don't buy it. 
So maybe for a hundred bucks a year, a thousand bucks a year, whatever the price is, I can have mm -hmm. that exclusive so that it is just for my business. So we use that. And to your point for artists, this is huge because Corey, you know, our buddy, Eric Dodge, right? Eric is an amazing musician. This might add initially just pennies to his bottom line, but this could be an opportunity for him to, you know, take some of his music and add 30 second little clips and stuff, mm -hmm. licensing it in new ways instead of just through ringtones and singles and albums. Cause he said he's never doing another physical CD again. Cause I don't even know what a physical CD is anymore. Right. I think that's, that's really neat. So, so big opportunity for business here. Completely agree. And I even see it going shorter and shorter and shorter into like little like gifts. We all have those songs that have like six beats to it that we love so much. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like the little quick little, you know, the the animations that you see in the gifts. Same thing with, with the little music pieces. Just imagine that, the little bitty clips to go along with that. I think it would just, I think it would transform Facebook, to be honest. I think it's pretty powerful. Yeah, and definitely. And look at how easy this is. I mean, this is the crazy thing. You know, I feel like I'm like on like QVC here trying to sell this. I mean, look at how yeah. easy this is. You know, I'm I've got a video I've recorded. I tap on the little yeah. post note icon. I click on the music one. I can now scrub to select the part of the music I want. This is what 12 seconds, 10, 12 seconds. Done. Look at that. And That's then awesome. the other thing, going back to your, you know, your mentioned Phil about the artist. Like the other part that I really like about this. You know, with with video, it's not always about picking what is the most popular. It's about picking what really evokes emotion from your video. Mm. And so, you know, that's where like, you know, if, if for example, if this is an artist I've never heard, but hey, I like the music and it works for what the project is I'm working on, they get instant exposure. You know, they're gonna be able to see who it is. Uh, you know, they I probably assume they would be able to buy this person's music or they could easily flip over to their favorite service you know, if they're streaming to it and, you know, add to a playlist. So lots and lots and lots of opportunities mm. to help help everyone here, help the person doing the videos, help the business, for example, because, hey, you're going to have more access to music, um, help the artist. So I think it's a win all around, actually. Yeah, maybe Facebook buys Pandora. Maybe that's the big move. Pandora actually already got bought, actually. They got bought yeah, by uh, Siri. That doesn't matter. Or, sorry, Siri. Uh, by uh, Sirius. Sorry, Sirius. Yeah, no, that that doesn't matter though, right? Facebook is <laughs> Facebook a behemoth. Yeah, I mean, it, and it would make sense, right? Because now we're talking about going live here, man. We're yeah. talking about this is an opportunity, and when we, you know, when you think about that, you that mentioned, actually is a really good idea, right? So you mentioned Siri, not just mm -hmm. Siri. Yes. So Christian, I think we should let folks know that we're gonna have in the tool time coming up real soon, folks. We're going to be talking about something to use for Siri. That's Don't want to get too that's much cool, away, but it's coming cool soon. Really cool feature. So, Corey. Before we get through, though, let's oh, talk yes. Lip Sync Live, by the way. Lip Sync Live. Okay, so, you know, they're adding Lip Sync Live as well to this. They're expanding yeah. that. They're going to make it available to everyone. Business pages can use this feature. What do you think? Awesome. So, Corey, we're going live on uh, – on, on your page, Impact, uh, real soon, right? Isn't that, that like 12.30 a.m.? Yes, uh, yes, when there's nobody watching, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, I think, again, it's it's one of those things that, you know, be careful um, out there, you know? I mean, there's a fine line between having fun and, and, and probably, you know, uh, damaging to some degree your credibility and all that kind of stuff that we all know. But, you know... I, I see like, you know, uh, you know, dental offices um, mm -hmm. doing this kind of thing. Uh, you know, you mentioned humanizing your brand. Just, you know, a lot of these, those little dental videos went viral. You saw, I think that's why Facebook's doing this, by the way, is they saw it out there. It was one of the most common viral aspects that were out there for a few months. Mm -hmm. And so they're doubling down on it. So as usual, with any of these new features that come, people will be super creative and do it really well. And people will fly, you know, fall flat on their face. I can't help you not fall flat on your face because I might be one of them that would, but I will see both of them and enjoy both probably equal. You know what I would love though is here, here's what I'm seeing. I'm thinking super fans, Disney having mm -hmm. one of the Disney singers and then bringing on a super fan that now they can go live and sing with, right? Lip sync with one of the Disney music stars or sing with Belle from Beauty and the Beast mm -hmm. side by side with the filter then that makes her look like Belle from Beauty and the Beast. I mean, this could be really big or, you know, you've got a, I wish I were an Oscar Mayer wiener. Yeah. 
Yep, lots of opportunity here. So this might be an to humanize. It might be an, also an opportunity to cartoonize your brand if you want to, <laughs> to make oh. yourself into a bit of a caricature. Yes. To make that kind of fun, right? Because sometimes that resonates. Again, if you're B2B, you probably don't want to be an Oscar Mayer wiener. And if you're Disney, you probably don't want to be a stiff uh, gray building, right? Right. <laughs> so Katie doesn't understand lip syncing. So Katie, it's when you don't say anything and your lips just move. It's really not that complicated. I'm just saying. So it's like karaoke with no actual vocal quality. So is like is lip syncing like is that a dated term? Like is it is it is it not used as much anymore? Maybe I, I mean I think what she's really saying, Corey, is she doesn't understand the allure of lip syncing. So. Oh, okay. I thought yeah. maybe it was like us, no. like uh, you know, Gen Xers or something that you know it just doesn't <laughs> get used anymore or something like that. But no, we're putting putting on the hits. Do you remember putting on the hits? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, like, like Star Search and shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, can we cuss yeah. on this show? Sorry. Uh, yeah, sometimes we're 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 a gentle R. Let's just say we're not explicit. So okay, you know we're not going Gary V here. We're more in line with this. So yeah. So cool. Katie says, I get what it is, but why? And the answer okay. is because if your voice sucks, maybe lip syncing is the answer. And not to mention, it also takes less energy to expend the vocal with no microphone. So you can use that energy to dance like Beyonce single ladies, like I'm gonna do a little later tonight. So all the single ladies. Uh, and by the way, for people in the, uh, in the, you know, in the uh, movie industry, you know, they do a lot of lip sync as well there. You know, if you're like say a background extra, a lot of times they have you lip sync, you know, like you're having a conversation with somebody, even though you're not actually having a real conversation. So, Ooh. you know, it is actually something to practice. It's actually, t it's very tough. So if you're trying to like, you know, say like, hey, you know, how do I have a conversation with somebody and actually not like. Right. And know, and since I will, I will, you know, I'm going to throw this out there on the other angle, just because you do have me sure. on the show and my book is social mm -hmm. media overload. But I like yeah. talking about these kind of things as mm -hmm. also a stark reminder to be very careful about overcomplicating and overdoing uh, all the different things you can do on social. You know, and I know there's people that are listening in right now that you know, mm -hmm. uh, have it down and, and need to try some different things. But there's also some people who still haven't figured out Facebook Live yet, you right. know, and mm -hmm. the the number one rule, in my opinion, to, to social media success is consistency. You know, so if you try out Facebook Live a couple of times and now you're doing the lip syncing thing and then you're doing the stories and then you're doing this, it, you just you're, you're flailing around. But the those yeah. who seem to do it really well, you know, kind of get into a groove like you guys have with this, man. I mean, you you. Mm -hmm you can tell this takes a while to kind of get this going and to push the boulder up the hill. So mm -hmm. I'm always out there preaching, if you will, to, to my attendees um, to pick a few and double down and do them really well and be very weary of the shiny new penny syndrome. There's yeah. always mm -hmm. going to be something new to do. There's always going to be something new to try, but don't forget to try to master what you've already tried to do a week ago. Yep. And, and certain features, I mean, sometimes, you know, it's testing, it, it might take, you know, a month to test out a feature. For example, I, you know, I've been part of a community of like entrepreneurs and like they tested this out, for instance, for about a year. And then they said, hey, you know what? This isn't really working at the moment. They're going to try something different, you know? So, um, you know, you kind of have to like, you know, look at, you know, the order of sequence you do things, you know, maybe something doesn't work now, um, test it out for a little bit and then maybe go back to it. You know, maybe it's just not the right time for things. So, absolutely, yeah, you, you have to stick with things. So, um, Phil, where do you want to go next? By the way, well, the last part. well, we've only got time for one more. So, just because Corey's here, and I know that he's not a Pinterest guy, because there's some Pinterest news. We're going to go to Twitter. And Corey, can you believe okay. this, man? Jack says Twitter is going to remove the like button. What? What's Strange. he thinking, man? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's another one of those tools that, and I know that we're going on a call and I, you know, I got to stick to my guns a little bit. Um, I, I prioritize social features based upon um, the business results that my clients get, Phil and Christian. And mm -hmm. over the last 10 years, Twitter has been um, on the bottom. Uh, right. It's a great mm -hmm. information gathering tool. It's a great discussion tool. It's a great celebrity following tool. It's a great political tool. All these different things. Has it been a great business generating result tool? LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram have been my favorite three. So all that being said, I am a Twitter user. I use it to collect information, gather information, stay connected to 
people mm-hmm. that I trust and admire like Phil. Um, so when I read that today about taking away the like button um, to sort of uh, bring down the, the negativity, you know, hey, I'm all for it if it works, guys. Uh, you know, to, to get rid of some of the, the nastiness and the trolls and things of that nature that you see on Twitter, if they feel like it's going to do that, great. Um, but I don't know. I, I will just have to wait, wait and see. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think we we have to wait and see with this. But if they do, the whole thing, I think, is this is this is one more way to cut down on automation. Because mm-hmm. if we like yeah. something, right, we can set up an if it recipe. We can set up like some automation. Post automatically, yeah. Yep. Yeah, do some things that leads to more trolling. So what we can see now is instead of seeing some of these accounts that are super inflammatory, getting four, mm-hmm. five, ten thousand, 10,000, because we know once you hit a critical mass, it just starts to fire. So we're going to see what happens there. Now, Amanda says she doesn't think removing the like button will do anything for trolls. We'll see. I, I I think it could. It could. So, I mean, I'm curious if you can leave another comment. Let us know. Why do you think that is? And what do you think maybe the impact of this will be as perhaps they move that like button? So what do you think, Christian? I think that, you know, for one, I want to see them test this out and see what it's like to remove the like button. Because, you know, the big thing with Twitter is a lot of people go on they will like something, for example, but they'll have like, the, that's it. Like the conversation doesn't go anywhere. You know, as Corey mentioned, like, you know, Twitter is kind of at the bottom. I tend to agree with that as well. It's at the bottom because a lot of people don't understand it for some reason. You know, they, they just had a study, for instance, that just came out saying um, people don't use a hundred, like 140 characters, 200 and change. People don't, it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't change like the tweet that people send. People aren't having conversations on Twitter. They're just, you know, they're liking something. But, you know, on the flip side of that, if they remove that, they use that right now as a signal to tell them, hey, you know what? Somebody likes this content. Let's adjust that news feed. You know, so by removing it, um, you know, I guess maybe their way would be to do some maybe some um, analysis of the comments, possibly, you know, maybe do some uh, AI to like analyze it automatically. Maybe Um, Hmm. that way they can use that as a social signal. But I'd like to see them test it. I don't know. You know, here's the thing. If they remove the like button. I don't see Facebook removing the like button. I don't see Instagram doing it. You know, no one's going to get rid of their, like YouTube's not going to get the thumbs up and thumbs down. They're not going to get rid of that. You know, I think it's a little too late. This should have been something they tested at like maybe a few years ago. Um, So that's where I stand on this. Yeah. Good points. Good points. We'll see what happens. But yeah, might not do anything. Amanda, if you've got any thoughts on that, let us know. But otherwise, we're just going to move on here because it is my favorite time of the show. It's tool time. We've got two tools we're going to talk about. And though we've got hundreds of tools we could talk about, we want to make sure that you don't miss them. So go to socialchefs.com slash daily. Sign up like Corey Perman did and get your news right from the horse's mouth. Christian does a great job of writing this up for you. Get the information because we're we're reading lots of stories, checking out lots of tools, doing a lot of things for you that can really help you. And I got one quick other share is starting next week on Tuesdays, we're going to be sharing on Appy Hour, or th- I'm sorry, Thursdays before the show, we're going to do an Appy Hour with Ann Wynn, where we're going to dive a little bit deeper into how to actually use those. So stay tuned for that. But Corey, so, we've got tool time here. Tool time. Christian, which uh, which tool do you want to start with, Christian? It's funny you ask that because I was going to say the same thing. I think we should start with the Siri one, actually, uh, Siri. called this one's called Routine Hub. And Root? so what this uh, one basically does is it's a tie-in. So for those of you running iOS 12, they have a new Shortcuts app. And that Shortcuts app is pretty fantastic. What it does is it makes it easier for you to be able to uh, create shortcuts that you can run through Siri. Now, these shortcuts might include things such as, you know, call somebody, for example, message somebody, you can do some basic stuff. But you can build much more complex uh routines basically have Siri run for you. And, you know, if you're not a programmer, not a developer, you know, that can be a little bit of a daunting task. That's where this fantastic community called Routine Hub comes in. They basically have people that are building these and they're putting them up. So for example, you can use, you know, Google Maps to automate things. You got people doing things such as, you know, hey, I got in an accident, text an emergency contact. Um, So it's actually helping you use your device, I think, in a more efficient way. Um, There's also some social media options as well. Cool. So, Corey, are you an iPhone or the inferior OS? I can't remember. Oh, I'm an iPhone. 
Yeah. So are you going to use this? I mean, of course we know Siri, but let's talk about using Siri here. Is it are this going to be something you're going to check out here with Routine Hub? Nice plug. Um, yeah, this was one of the ones that you guys got me kind of, you know, geeked out on a bit, you know. Um, and and Chris and I have a kind of a clarifying question. Um, yeah, sure. Do is it um, uh, crowdsourced, uh, or is it, do they have a certain uh, like app developers creating this? Do you know? Um, I'm not sure on that one actually. I I assume it's because I use a lot of other tools as well. Like so, I think it's probably just open to anyone to submit. Okay. You know, just, um, yeah. So. You know, they, they want people to, you know, here's the thing. If somebody creates something and it's well worth it, you know, to have in a community, like it's going to get critical mass, I think, by people, you know, giving it reviews, downloading it and whatnot in this case um, and installing it. Yeah. So I think that, you know, that's probably the way they're going to work. Yeah. That would make it even cooler to me if, if what you just said is is the way it is going. Because, you know, it, it all the the ones that the, the crowd kind of creates that creates traction, you know, rises to the top, which would just be really neat on this platform. But yeah, as I scan through there, you know, it's just, you know, we all, we all only scratch the surface uh, of what we can do, you know, with the shortcuts of this phone and just yes. reading through those, I was just blown away by stuff that I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. This is also just like product hunt, right? Where we see mm -hmm. these, get upvoted and downvoted. We see people submit these and it becomes a bit of a social network. And really where I see also this might playing is becoming your default lock, uh, home screen for your uh, Safari on your mobile phone so that every day you come and you're like, oh, wow, I've got a new possible shortcut I could add to my Siri that says, you know, and I'm going to cover up my Siri right now. I'm going to say, you know, hey, Siri, you know, show me how to do X, Y, Z. And she does that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. So, of course, even though I cover her, up, <laughs> stop listening. She says knowledge is good. I'm with you there, Siri. Thank you so much. But, yeah, she listens even when I don't want her to. Um, so, which is, you know, that's all we can ask. Um, there's a whole other podcast around that. That's, yeah, and, that's and here's the thing, by the way, with this, like if you scroll down to the left hand side. So, you know, I'm on the Routine Hub site. You know, you're going to have some categories here, but you could tap into, you know, some of the apps that are on your device. For example, you know, you do have some for Facebook and these are going to be ways for you. To, in this case, this is a, you know, download video and audio and images from Facebook just by having Siri do this. So, you know, um, there's a lot of options here. You're not limited to what's here. Like you can build your own, you can submit them. It's actually very easy. I've actually been using this app for like actually a pretty good while. It used to be called the Workflow app. Uh, which was owned by another company, Apple purchased them, and then they've now turned it into the Shortcuts app, which ties into Siri. You can also use this, um, if you use the Shortcuts app, I put a link, by the way, in the comments for the show. What this will let you do is you can also create, uh, so this, the tool is for the Siri side, but if you use the Shortcuts app, you can also create your own that are just one touch presses of a button to do actions. So lots and lots and lots of useful features. So awesome, man. Cool. Well, I didn't know that this was one of your favorite apps, Christian. We'll have to talk more about this because this is this has got some possibilities here for sure, man. So so Corey, we got one more for you here, man. I'm not sure if you saw this app. The coming soon is all about the seed prod coolness app to help you jumpstart your website with coming soon pages. So Corey, did you poke at this here? What are you thinking, man? Do you do any of these uh, for clients or you just hand them all off to our buddy Patrick Allman? <laughs> uh, you mean like in terms of plugins or website development or both? Well, well either one, yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I found this interesting. I never thought about a coming soon uh, plugin, if you will. We usually just have, I, like I'm sure you do or Patrick does, somebody to design a coming soon or under construction page. Um, so this was this was neat. I'm not sure how needed it is candidly. Um, I, I guess I didn't explore to the point, like maybe I can ask you guys this question, like does it go deeper than just uh, offering a coming soon? Are you guys seeing other things in there beyond just a, a hey, we'll be back in a few weeks or? So the part that I think is is unique about this one is that it offers the ability, you know, as a business to actually build your email list. So as you are, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you're putting the coming soon part up. So for example, if I took my website down, people have no way to get in touch with me, right? Mm -hmm. So what this does is it allows me to put up a coming soon page 
and then have a call to action to be able to get you to opt into my list. So for example, I could put this up, I could say, hey guys, uh, we've got a new you know product coming out, um, or let's, let's say we have a new podcast. I could put this up, tell you a little bit more about the podcast, it's basically a landing page builder, but then I could say, you know what, if you want to get notified when we launch, put your email address in, and that could put you into an email list that is just for my podcast, for example, um, or you can have these for other features as well. So that's where I think the value is. So you're not losing, you're not losing the customer thinking, oh, the customer is going to come back to my site. You know, that makes a, that makes all the difference in the world to me then that that is cool. I like yeah. that. Yeah. And if you think about it, I mean, if you're going to redo your website and hopefully you do every 18 to 36 months and that's a big mm -hmm. range there. But if you're going to do that and you pay for the ultimate license for 240 bucks, if every time you change it, because for about, you know, usually three or four days, you got to be down before mm -hmm. you can go fully live, unless right. you like to be kind of gimping along. Well, mm -hmm. you're gonna capture some more names from that. And if the whole domain redirects then to this landing page, well, you don't lose any of the SEO value from Google either. True, mm -hmm. true, true, true. And, you know, and it's, you know, it also gives you like, it's got the, you know, it's got the, it's it's easy. So the, one of the challenges, it's a WordPress plugin. One of the challenges with, you know, typically building a landing page is it's very complicated. This is drag and drop. It's a drag and drop interface. You're getting access to background images, Google fonts, a lot of themes as well. Um, but it also has, as I mentioned, the email side, it has the ability to add social proof as well. So like you could have it where, you know, people can go in and they can, you know, say, hey, you know what? We're also on, you know, if you're just on say Facebook and Instagram, you can put your social channels up there as well. So that way you're also building your social audience at the same time, building your email list and building intrigue from your customers. So it's pretty nice value. This, by the way, it's by the uh, people who own, uh, it's by Syed Balki, uh, or they own it, they own it now at uh, WP Beginner. So, mm. um, so cool. you're building out that WordPress stable. Well, one other thing I'm going to add for anyone who listens all the way to the end here, um, it, 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 it sort of integrates, but, and I also noticed on all the different uh, sites that you guys had me play around on, they all had this, so I got to mention it. Um, is we all we all want to convert you know website visitors we want to capture their information and we all most of us know that uh, interrupting pop-ups are a more effective approach than a static um, opt-in form mm -hmm. but the challenge is they're very fairly the right way and they had an exit pop-up where mm -hmm. as you are leaving as you're hovering over that X bar that pop-up would come out <coughs> before you leave and so just a reminder to everybody if you're thinking of kind of increasing your conversions, uh, as you move into 2019 and you want to consider a, you know, an interrupting pop-up, you might consider the exit because it's usually the time of experience that frustrates people. It comes up too soon, mm -hmm. you're right away or when they're navigating your experience, but when they're leaving anyway, wait, wait, before you leave, let me collect your information before you go is a really neat way of doing that. So just a yeah. random. And another little plug, I guess, on that is uh, Optin Monster. I don't know if you've tested that one, Corey. They have the whole X and intent. I, we use that on our site. Um, that is another fantastic tool, also owned by Syed Balki as well. That's right. That's what so, I thought. Yeah, that's when you yeah. mentioned that. It like clicked in my head. Yeah. Yeah. So fantastic. And that one's totally customizable as well. Like you can set up rules. You can have certain pop-ups show up for different content. Um, so it is, you know, both those tools well worth the investment because you're not losing the customer. You have to remember exactly. you, you know, the customer's on your site for a brief amount of time and you have, you know, a small amount of time to engage them. So you know, if you don't have your site set up to collect that email address, you know, email address, it's email marketing still very, very, very valid. You know, uh, you know, you need to have a way to collect that email address. Don't don't assume they're going to just remember to come back to your site. They're not going to write it down. Oh, on Thursday right. at you know eight a.m., I got to go back and visit Corey's site or I got to visit right. Phil's site. Right. So you have to keep that in mind. Yep. So great. Yeah, really, on. really great point. Yep. Right on the money, man. So. So awesome. So two tools, four topics, and the amazing Corey Perlman. Corey's the author of Social Media Overload. He's a great speaker, runs an excellent agency. Corey, remind folks, if they want to get more in touch with you, where would you send them? How can they get more of your awesome sauce? I would just say uh, the website, CoreyPerlman.com, uh, or Impact Social Media will get you there. And I'll just put a plug in for you guys. Uh, it's been a joy to be on the show. Um, I really did learn a lot when I was uh, researching your stuff, whether you're uh, a beginner in, in social or digital or been doing it for 10 plus years like myself, there's always stuff to learn. Learned a lot from you guys. 
Um, and we'll continue to learn a lot from you guys now that I'm uh, you know, a, a fanboy. So thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being on the show. I got to say, I'm, I'm impressed as well. I mean, just, you know, I got to check out your book, but love all the knowledge you're dropping. I mean, you're dropping practical information. That's the key thing, you know, for people to remember, like you have to get started, but you also have to be practical. Like don't try to fit something that doesn't work into your business. You know, if you're, you know, just, you know, if you're an older company, for example, you know, certain features might not like jive with your customers. You have to look at that. It's all about the customer. That's so, right. That's absolutely fantastic. right. Enjoy having you on so much. Now, thank you, Christian. So cool. cool. Phil, so what's going on next week, Christian? So ten o'clock as well. Uh, next week we have uh, Jeff Howell on, I think. Right? Holy cow! Yeah, that's right. Jeff Howell. Jeff Howell is the uh, fan club president of Chris Collinsworth Incorporated. He hmm. really loves Chris Collinsworth like nobody else. <laughs> so if you're still listening to this, anybody, come back next week and just let. Chris know how much you love Chris or Jeff know how much you love Chris Collinsworth because actually he hates him. So bring your memes, lay it on Jeff, but he's a super smart guy. We enjoy giving him a hard time and uh, yeah, good dude. So check him out. He's Jeff Hall 76 on uh, Twitter. Very nice. And I'm going to be, uh, I think we're going to be broadcasting uh, from another location actually next week, Phil. So we are. Yeah, that's interesting. Down yeah. In, uh, in South Africa at Digimarcon Africa. Uh, emceeing the event, also talking about uh, uh, repurposing your content, you know, how yeah. you get more out of your social media. So um, this could be a good show next week. So That's awesome. awesome. Corey, Safe travel. It's been, thank you. Thank you, Corey. It's been fantastic having you on the show this week. Guys, we will see you next week, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks for spending your evening with us. We'll have a blog recap up tomorrow. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Bye. everybody.